we are live. Except oh, not oh, live. Oh, no, it's on. we're not it's live. On? We're recording? Yeah. Wait, no. Oh. Well, we are <laughs> recording. Right, so... I just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're live. Wait, wait. <laughs> okay. Uh it's uh what, eleven two? November second already. Wow. Um so uh we've been working away on getting the skills into their individual shapes. Um, and we're starting to think about uh, the skill interaction stuff. Um, and along the way, we've noticed that our Wi-Fi setup process, uh, which we've known for a while is, is a little uh, buggy, um, wasn't, wasn't really finished, but we thought it was good enough. Uh, turns out it's not good enough. So we're going to take a step back and, uh, and make that actually work properly. So that's kind of, where I see see us uh, overall right now. Uh, in the meantime, um, I believe we've started to solicit uh, feedback from the community about at least some elements of the skill interaction um, uh, thoughts that we're uh, we're having, and uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, well, actually, I've already seen some of the feedback on uh, Derek's videos, so that's good. Um, and uh, we will, uh, I think, we'll keep producing videos like that in terms of you know uh setting expectations for what uh how we want the system to work um there's also some additional uh, uh documentation that we're working on i don't know uh, where we are in the process of sharing that with the community um, but uh, we've got some some ideas about how to um, start to add a little bit more formality to the message bus messages and the things that are happening within the system so that it's a little bit more uh easy to monitor uh, and keep track of what's going on. Yeah, so, I want to add the example that we went over in Hawaii to that document just to have something to kind of sure. like how it works, and then we'll probably be able to pass it on to the community. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so and just in terms of like uh, high level, where where are we? I think uh, I think that's it. Um, and uh, so, so why don't you guys take it away in terms of uh, individual statuses? uh oops chris go ahead i'm the only one not muted so yeah sure um today i was a little was a bit of everything um i had an interview with the candidate um i responded to some um pr um comments guys had on my latest pr the for the gui for the wi-fi skill um and I fixed, uh, I, I'm about ready to submit a PR that fixes the skill date um, on the um, device um, when, you, when you have a, a dev kit. Um, my new methodology is I found out that the Mycroft skills repo is actually checked out on the device. MSM uses it. Um, I've checked out cloned on the device. Um, I found where it is, and I'm using uh, Git logs to find the most recent commit on that on that um, repository, and get the time out for that, and then that's the time that's going to go on the device. So, okay, that'll be great. That'll be at least deterministic. Yes, it should be the same for everybody this way. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will submit that PR today, and it's only a few lines of code. Um, so guys, if you, I'll probably throw that your way if you look at it tonight. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, that was it uh, tomorrow. And um, tomorrow when we get back to working on that document, we want to share with the community about the organizing the code. Um, and hopefully we'll get going through with that in a day or two, and we'll be able to share that out. And I'll start working on that. OK. Great. Ken. Oh, wait, no, no, sorry. Sorry, Ken. Derek. I forgot Derek's got the oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, on the software side, we, uh, you know, we met with Boost Systems this morning for our weekly GUI sync. Um, there's a couple things, or there's at least one thing there I need to take a look at. It's a, a load, there's a loading animation uh, kind of issue where we've got all different types of loading animations we've created at the beginning. It's kind of confusing. So I was going to create the ideal, um, you know, what we'd like to see and see if they can help us get that sorted out. Um, 
let's see. I did do, uh, I, I had an issue where weather does not seem to be working on my device. So I, I logged a bug on that. Um, it's not, not on the home screen and it uh, does not, um, no intents pick up weather. It just goes straight to Wikipedia and gives you <laughs> the definition of weather. So something's going on there. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the other thing that I saw and um, a couple things in Jira that I, I need to do, I would uh, like to split out the mute functionality, I think, into its own ticket. I think Michael suggested maybe doing that uh, for the home screen, um, just so that we can, you know, it's got a couple things I'd like to do with it. Uh, you know, I'd like, you know, for example, the LEDs to show something as well as on the screen. Um, but we've talked about this new edge, you know, both uh, Chris mentioned this too, the, the new edge illumination concept being um, a good consistent way to, to show that as well. So I think there's just enough there that we could just maybe split it off to its own ticket. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, just read a note that we're changing the scope of, you know, a, a comment in that ticket where yeah. you're, you know, signing off on splitting the mute functionality into a new, new task. And then of course there's the big Wi-Fi process uh, that I actually have just read. I haven't really done any work on it yet, but I know that's that's uh, going to take some some thinking um, in terms of the UI, the GUI side. Um, but yeah, mostly today is still kind of working on hardware stuff, um, kind of unpacking. We had a meeting at Aztec last night, and so we're going to unpacking um, some stuff from that meeting and, and starting to plan. Did I miss something on the Wi-Fi skill? Um, Why are we changing the UI design? Well, these would be things that we're, we would need to add based on our conversation uh, at the summit. So things like oh, okay, that what, what happens when connectivity is lost, what happens oh, okay. when, um, you know, things like that. Like, so this would be new stuff. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you've got everything in there that was currently defined, so. So yeah, a lot, a lot of hardware stuff today, but that's been good. We've been getting some plans laid out for that. All right, cool. All right, uh, Ken. So uh, Michael, did you see you were called out in the dev channel? There's some feedback for you in there. Uh, let's see oh, I so check it out. Yeah. Um, so I was working on the um, NTP stuff. And I was in the enclosure. I was actually moving the enclosure up so that it comes up right after the bus. Uh, but there's really no way to synchronize that because there's services right now. Uh, but anyway, um, I tried to change the date and realized that you can't change the date or time on the Mark II. I suspect it's container permission issues, so I've reached out to Panacore on that. Um, trying to switch networks from our container using the D-Bus, I realized... Uh, I'm gonna to have to replicate the whole access point stuff. So I've been working on figuring out how to, I mean, I, it's pretty easy to get the access point up and everything, but uh, figuring out how to get the login profile set up so it spits out HTML when you hit it with a, without any authentication and that kind of stuff. So that's where I was at. And then that was like the first half of the day. And then. Yeah. All right, so who hasn't done status yet? Vera? I went first. You went first. That's um, right. So we're all done. Oh, okay. yes. No, I guess. I did a hell of a lot of yeah. translation stuff. So apologies to everyone's inboxes. Um, uh, courtesy of Goldie Fruit, um, who um, does some excellent Docker um, images of, of Mycroft. Um, he did. Uh, he was doing some benchmarking of the um, the OBOS um, precise light plugin against you know precise. You know standard um and you know uh, as you'd expect it's it's significantly lower resource so i um asked him to do the same for for the for the Minecraft one um which you know he didn't know about because we haven't really told many people about it um uh and what became apparent there is that 
yeah, as I said in the chat, like we're we're starting off at like you know super low, like eight percent CPU usage, but it's just like slowly creeping up over the course of the first 30, 40 minutes, um, and which makes sense as to why the the service eventually just crashes because it's you know eating too much stuff and can't handle it. So there's something in there that's um, you know some reinforcement loop that's um, out of hand uh, that we need to find and and nix. Uh, so yes, um, we can either do that or we can, um, which seems like it still seems like a better approach uh, to to only run the TF light runtime um, as Ken you know uh, did all the work on on doing that um, rather than you know the the Ovos way is to have like the the precise traditional method of having the the, the separate runner and and everything. Um, so this should theoretically be be even leaner, but um, we've got to wait and see. Yeah, so we've got a memory or a process leak or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I suspect the memory leak. I'll, I'll get to that one. Get this bring up stuff squared away. Um, other than that, just lots of lots of things. Uh, yeah, um, I am trying to to use the new PR processing project board, public project board, and and push that out to to um, some of the community channels to to let people have a look at that. Um, uh, we have a lot of outstanding PRs in Mycroft, so I mean, you know, it's it's no small feat <laughs> to like uh, try and get that backlog down. Um, but yeah, the hope is that this will, um, particularly for things that are like current and ready to actually merge, that they won't slip through the cracks and disappear, um, that we'll kind of keep on top of the, the front of the queue and, and clearing that out, you know, reduces noise and hopefully that aids processing of the remainder of the queue as well, you know. Yeah, um, we'll take. Uh, yeah, we we need to keep on top of that. This is kind of a new process for us, so um, definitely want to get better at uh, setting the expectations with the community about you know what we're working on, what our priorities are, um, you know, and and uh, where we're looking for help, and you know, yeah. and where we're not looking for help, frankly, you know. There's, there's, uh, I think that, you know, the, the plugin process that was started a few years ago, I think is something that we definitely want to continue to build on. And, um, and I think that, you know, uh, we want to move in a direction where, um, you know, a lot of the things I think that, you know, uh, some of our community members want to contribute, um, maybe don't belong in core, right? Maybe they belong in a plugin and, mm. you know, if the architecture doesn't support the right kind of plugin for those things, then. Um, then that's what I would rather work on rather than try to build more functionality in the core that's not necessarily, uh, you know, if it's not necessarily where that should go. Yeah. So in my opinion, core is already, you know, kind of a nightmare. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've had plans for, you know, a year and a half to, uh, to untangle some of that mess. Um, but we just frankly have, we just barely, you know, uh, With, that are preventing us from accepting PRs uh, in a in a timely way, but um, but you know I'm adamant to be frank that we're not just going to accept all PRs uh, because it creates a you know a bigger test burden on us and it creates um, you know uh, uncertainty around uh, you know performance and things like that. So um, you know we need to be pretty measured about how we accept certain kinds of of submissions at this point. Um, because we're trying to take Mycroft from a place where it's, you know, it's a great uh, development tool and lots of people use it um, to something that is production ready. And it's a whole different set of requirements. Um, so, um, you know, so uh, we, we can't just uh, accept 
everything without without a fair bit of scrutiny. So, yeah, I've seen um, Gen uh, communicate that message through the forums recently as well. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's you know, I wouldn't mind having like a people put know. a lot of effort into certain things, but you know, particularly if it like you know there, there's a, a, a the XDG um, skills mm -hmm. PR. You know, there's some more stuff that needs to happen to make um, Micro Skills Kit uh, use XDG paths, for example. Um, and yeah, like I, I still believe that you know becoming XDG compatible is is good for the long term prospects of Minecraft across different things, um, but it it doesn't. And Dev's already halfway there. We shouldn't be leave that half done. We should. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to. We should wanna... follow through with that if we started. Close that out um, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, it's just you know spending time working on us working on MSK improvements to to make XDG work does not in any way get us towards the Mark II shipping. So, um, so yeah, they um, they communicated that and hopefully a a good way and and. Um, uh, Hopefully we we can get that moving with some community with some more community support. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, if it weren't for the pandemic, I think we would have had a, a completely different uh, forum experience. This is something that uh, we we wanted to do last year and and again this year, but um, it's just not possible to get everybody together for you know a convention style meet up and, and, and hash out a lot of these issues, which, you know, internally we found to be extremely valuable, even just with our small team. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think about, you know, when's the right time to, uh, to have something like that, even if it's just a virtual event. Uh, I think that yeah. might be useful. Yeah, yeah totally. So. All right. Well, any other news uh, people want to share? All right. Well, let's make sure we are very clear with our communication uh, on the Wi-Fi stuff. Um, you know, we, we did spend a lot of time hashing out the requirements and making sure that, you know, we can have a well-defined boot up sequence, uh, and um, and from there it will it will be a lot easier to define. Once that's working, it'll be a lot easier for us to define what happens when we lose connectivity because we'll have, you know, uh, we'll have a well-defined system for responding to connectivity loss, internet loss, um, you know, and, uh, and from there we can, you know, add in the, the paths we need to trigger like changing Wi-Fi networks or whatever, if we want to go that way. So, um, so let's, uh, let's be clear on communicating, communicating that over to Panacore. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to Which proceed in a measured, measured way, but, you know, his document, right? What's that? which is simply Chris V providing them with his document, correct? Um, yeah, but I think we need to engage in a dialogue with him as well. Um, yeah. the, do uh, the document will, will, define the, will define the steps is all it does. So yeah, we're, you know, I'm sure there'll be some, some further communication will need to happen after they read that and try to digest it. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's what we need on our side in order to yeah. get things to work, but then there's the, okay, well, how are we going to implement it? If they were going to implement a message bus thing that would just send us the specific messages we required, then we'd be done, right? Yeah. Um, and the document but, assumes that there's a message bus being used on their side. Right. So, uh, you know, if they, if they can't go that way or aren't willing to for whatever reason, then, you know, we need to figure out, okay, what's the implementation path? Is it building a translator for the D bus over to the message bus on our side? You know, how do we solve Ken's NTP, you know, Time setting problem, things like that. So, um, uh, so I think we should talk through the whole process with them. Uh, maybe we even need to set up a um, a conference call to go over the document after they've had a couple of days to, to look over it. Um, I was kind of hoping it would just be, you know, here's a here's a set of requirements, throw it over the wall, and it magically happens, you know. But if it's not that, then let's get together and instead of you know going back and forth with you know. Uh, text messages are, you know, in my opinion, a terrible way to communicate uh, most things. Um, so let's get together and have a face-to-face, -face, you know, uh, after they've had a chance to, uh, you know, digest the document. So, 
All right, so Chris, uh, are you going to take uh, lead on that? I'll there. take I'll lead on which I'm taking lead on getting the document to them. Yeah, and set up a communication because it's really between you and Ken and, and them. Right? Okay, I'll I mean, get a I'll ask them about it getting a meeting set up too. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'll and um, yeah, and if we do, you know, if we do these one step at a time, it should be pretty straightforward and shouldn't, you know, hopefully it will not, uh, you know, we won't be tripping over ourselves as we do it. So, all right. Thanks, guys. One other uh, thing, real quick. Um, oh. can we, I wanted to know if, like, um, <laughs> I, I want another minor version of core. Oh, okay. Um, mostly because there's a bunch of testy stuff in there that is going to start holding up a lot of our skill work from making it into the marketplace, which it should be getting its way into for too long. Um, so any, I know, I mean, I, I know I just, when I say that, I feel bad when I say that I'm basically putting hours of work on Gez's plate, but, <laughs> um, I do think we're at a point now where it's probably worth doing, um, so we don't hold up all this stuff, um, getting into the marketplace. Any, anybody else have any thoughts on that? Well, my, my thought is if you have specific things that are being held up, you know, that need to get out to the Mark IIs, then absolutely we should do that. Um, but you know, I, I don't think we should do it just because maybe sometime in the future it'll be useful. You know, so I'm not sure where exactly you're at. It will, it, like it is, you know, because the to get things in the marketplace, they need to pass all the all the testing, um, and so because these test steps aren't available in in production Mycroft, then they won't pass and therefore they, you know, if we put them in the marketplace, then everything will just fail forevermore. So, um, uh, yeah, I think, I think it is a good thing to do. Um, is there anything else, is there, particularly VK wise that we're thinking will be like that we have on the cards? Cause if there is anything else, we should try and get that in before we cut the release. I haven't touched VK since our we finished our skill sprint, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't have anything else standing. Everything, yeah. There's nothing else that's glaringly breaking or anything, or you know, in need. Not that I can think of, but I also think we'll have you know we'll have a major revision here soon, and so we should just go. Yeah, I, I think if, if something else comes up, maybe we just you know draw a line in the sand and say. That's right. when the major reason comes out. Cool. Okay. So new new minor release imminent then. Yep. Okay. There'll, there'll be more stuff in there than just the CK stuff because there have been things committed to them. But. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I might okay. do. I might get the Mark Twos updated to prop twenty one dot two dot one proper before we do that. Um, so we can all test it. Yeah. And so that way we can, we can um, get back to at least, you know, pegging the, the stable releases. Um, uh, but yeah, I'll add a ticket to cut a new minor release. All right, cool. Well then, um, all right. It just occurs to me that the ticket I've got assigned to Ken maybe should be reassigned to Chris. If he's, uh, I think I misunderstood uh, who was in, in contact with Panticore um, regarding the uh, the Wi-Fi changes. So uh, maybe you guys should sort that out. Um, well, it sounds like I've I'm defining them and Ken's implementing them. So what kind of what it sounds like right now? Um, well, so. <laughs> well, and I want to yeah, make exactly. sure that we have have the the super high level vision of what we're looking for clear between it's, ourselves. It's really well. simple. I mean, the, the high level vision is very simple. We we have a well defined signal that does not report that the internet is available until 
the internet has actually been reached and the time has been synchronized using NTP. Yeah. That's it. But so, like, we, you know, what would the, what does the on-screen experience look like? Um, if the, uh, yeah, anyway, cause there's the, there's the whole like on-screen Wi-Fi selection, you know, mm -hmm. um, stuff. All that seems fine. There was a couple little tweaks we wanted to make, uh, just in terms of the user experience, like the user not knowing like, oh, well, you know, when you, when you type in your SSID, you select an SSID and you put in your password, it just kind of goes dark and doesn't tell you what's happening after that. Like that's a little tweak that we well, Yeah, You're talking about the instructional UI. Like there is, there is yeah. also a, an entire UI for like Wi-Fi network management, like on the screen. And, you know, I mean, on the, wait, on the Mark II screen or on the... On the Mark II screen. Uh, yeah, so yeah we, don't get me started on that. About this. Yeah, we should probably talk about this and get it out. This is what Derek was talking about. So... You mean a pull-down menu? Yeah. There's two ways to connect, right? There's the way we do it now, and then there's a way you could do it using the soft keyboard. And so Derek had the grand vision of merging them and incorporating them somehow. Um, and somehow that's crept into this discussion. But that's not, no, no, that's, that's not, not part of this discussion. discussion well, that's be, that's right. what I'm saying is like, no, no, I that is not part of the discussion as far as I'm okay. I'm aware. Correct. So right. That's I agree. With you. All right. So then, if that's not part of the discussion, what are we discussing? What we're discussing is the ability to recover from network failures. That's step right? two. Step step one is to be able to know where we are in our network establishment process so we can order our boot sequence the way we want. Right. Then step two, deal with connectivity loss. Yeah. In other words, yeah. recovery from fatal yes. errors. Yeah. Right. Correct. So that, that's it from a high level. There's step one and step three. That's what we're trying to accomplish. Step three, profit. So. Um, All right. Well, and step four, step three, step something, step N plus one uh, is, you know, is where I see this, the on-screen stuff coming back in is like where, you know, imagine I'm connected to a network and I want to change networks. Like, you know, what do I do? Do I? That's, that's part of, that's, that will be handled as part of the, uh, I lost my internet connection. That's, that's defined in the same ticket. Mm, feels the user. different. Well, I mean, y yes, they are different. They're different functional requirements, but they rely on the same underlying processes. So maybe we could split it into two tickets, but it's in the ticket right now as I defined it. Okay. Well, I'll, you know, you lose, if the user can uh, choose a new uh, wire, wireless network because they lost the old network, then why not let them choose a new wireless network because they want to, right? Um, so they're, they're both, both of those functions are defined in there. All right. It just, we, we don't want to get into a tail chasing where we say, well, we're in step two and we could solve that here, but let's not because in step four, we're going to solve that. No, That's and I, I definitely don't want to, I'm definitely not saying that. I'm uh, like, I'm saying step four is, is next project yeah. in the future. Like step one and yeah, step I mean, are they're important right now. Yeah, and they're, those, those are ones that are necessary just for the basic user experience, right? Yeah, if we had an on-screen display and you didn't have to use your phone to type in your SSID and password and stuff, that'd be a better experience on the Mark II, but it's not as scalable, you know, uh, and, you know, for devices that, for example, don't have a display. And so we're just, you know, we're trying to solve, you know, the more general problem first. Um, right, and, and I think this all began because of, Derek's input regarding, well, what happens after I push connect on my phone? Because when we were out there doing the focus groups, it was clear that people were lost. They didn't know if something else was being expected of them, whether they needed to do something else, whether it worked or whether it didn't. Mm -hmm. How did they know if it worked or it didn't? And so then yeah. what happened was that it was just intermediate status messages during that process that were defined that would enable us to give better messaging to the user during that process. That's how this all got kicked off. Well, and, and right, and also correct the error that was preventing them from correct. actually, you know, getting to the next correct. step. Correct. Um, 
you know, so, you know, looking at your Mark II and saying, well, I don't know, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. I guess I'll power cycle it. And then, hey, it magically works. That's a crappy user experience. So, you know. Yeah, I guess I'm just um, flagging this, you know, step four and beyond stuff because like that's already been communicated to Pentacore as well. And so like if we're then coming to them talking about Wi-Fi management, with, without the context of, of the other stuff, then they might also be like, what the hell are you guys talking about? You told us something completely different before, you know. Um, so. Yeah, this is this is not, this has nothing to do with the on-screen Wi-Fi setup stuff at all. So, yeah. and in fact, uh, in, in, you know, in the perfect world for me, uh, it wouldn't even be, it was certainly wouldn't be implemented through, you know, the pull down menu as it is right now. It would be actually just through the skill. It'd be a, a skill graphical interface for that. Um, but we'll get there later. Like, I think, you know, the, the, the thing that we talked about, I don't well, know if you're part of this. I mean, originally it, it just about... showed up on, on boot and like it had the yeah. you know, Wi-Fi set up, you know, on the screen. I know, but I think, I think we should be able to boot all the way up into Minecraft core running on the device without Wi-Fi at all. Even if you require Wi-Fi for TTS, like the device should boot and at least tell you, hey, I need a Wi-Fi signal, right? There's no reason why it should go into like a weird state. It should just be, you know, um, should be interactive in some way. Uh, and so we should be able to use skills and things like that to do things like set up your Wi-Fi and whatnot. Now, I don't want to re-implement the AW Connect just to do it uh, for now, but, you know, ultimately... I mean, we kind of, we, we already have that because we we boot the entire system and then run the Wi-Fi connect skill okay. to show the instructions. So like, yeah, uh, uh, well, we should be able to do that without errors getting thrown. Yes. Yeah, which, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah. without the TTS engine, you know, throwing up all over the place because like it doesn't have an internet connection or whatever. So anyway, uh, we'll get there. Okay. Uh, I think we've beaten this horse to death. Uh, so, uh, Chris, uh, you're going to get in touch with Panacor, and uh, we'll chat tomorrow. Maybe they can deal with it tonight. Cool. All right. All right. Bye, Bye guys. So. Have a good one.